the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. follow Christ the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them out on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, 
caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. My God, my God, my God why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, I am your hand. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God. My God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. 
In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here, while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples. He found them asleep. He said to Peter, So, you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has to come to pass, 
that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest <laughs> rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest <laughs> said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then what was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And then he was accused by the chief priests and elders. He made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, 
his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort, cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were spilt, split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many, the centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, 
ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the Mary of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him, and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Grace to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, so it begins, and how does it begin? It begins with an empty church, alone, isolated. And I encourage all of you during these days to remember that for the most part of the Passion, Jesus was alone. It was just him and the Father, and that was enough. Jesus experienced everything that we have experienced. In fact, he experienced what it's like to not have what he loved most. And he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And my friends, I fear that this crisis is going to get worse. And although these are challenging times, they're incredible times to be alive. And people might say, like, Father, how can you possibly say that? It's awful. Even if things are going to get worse. And I say that because crisis and tragedy is where the church was born. Crisis and tragedy is where the church grows. We have a, a famous saying is the faith or the blood of the martyrs is the seedbed of the church. When we're attacked is when we rise up. When things are taken away is when saints are made. And so yes, indeed, these are privileged times to be alive and to be a Christian. And that's what this whole week is about. This truth that crisis and tragedy is where power in the mind and heart of God comes from is what Holy Week is all about. And the passion conveys this truth in a way that no story ever has in the history of the world. It's as if Jesus is moving closer to his death. He's surrounded on all sides with what's wrong with us. All the dysfunction of humanity is around him. And some of the great scripture scholars say that the passion narratives, the, the gospels themselves are just introductions to the passion narratives. The passion narrative is the fullness of of everything in the divine plan of salvation. And as Jesus is going through this, he's experiencing all the evil, all the pain, all the suffering that we experience. That's why in the letter to the Hebrews it says, we have such a high priest that has been tempted in every way that we have, but without sin. And the first place that sin and hu human dysfunction is put on display is the agony in the garden. It's the agony in the garden. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but in the Last Supper, Jesus shares the Eucharist with us, which is his body and blood is almost, is, is mingled with our body and blood. 
And it's in that one flesh union that he almost contracts human disease, human sin. And that's why it's right after the Last Supper, he begins to suffer in a way that he's never suffered before. And this suffering is intense. It's so intense that he sweats blood, which is an actual human condition. When the body gets under so much stress, the capillaries in the skin break. And it secretes blood and sweat. My question is, is what did Jesus see that caused him to sweat blood? I think he saw all of human dysfunction. All of it. And I think first, that first time he goes to pray, that first time he goes to pray, what does he see? He sees the crucifixion. He sees himself being beaten. He sees himself being scourged. He sees himself being denied by his own friend. He sees the nails. He sees the crowns of thorns. He sees the cowardice of Pilate. The denials of Peter. He sees it all. And that's why he says, Father, if this chalice can be taken from me, take it. If you ever get to a place where you're suffering, and you feel like you just can't go on, know that he's been there. And answer in the way that he answered, Lord, Father, I don't want to do this, but I want your will more than I want mine. In that second prayer, when he goes back and prays a second time, he sees as only the mind of God can see, past, present, and future, all sins that will be committed against him. The rape, the murder, abortion, contraception, the pornography industry, sex trafficking, abuse, physical, sexual, all the dysfunction of the human family, the drug networking, the promiscuity of the college scene, everything being committed against him because he is God. And still he stands, still he endures so as to be with us. And on his third time going back, what he experiences is what it's like to commit all of these sins. The pain that you feel after you've committed them. As St. Paul says, he was made sin. He was made sin so that we might be freed from it. So yeah, with all that, I might sweat blood too. And in the midst of this excruciating pain, he finds his disciples, the ones that were closest to him, he finds them asleep. He asked for one thing from them. Just one. In his whole life, he asked for one thing just for himself. And they didn't do it. Pray with me. I honestly thank you guys that if there is the one thing that God is asking from every single one of you, it's stay with me. Pray with me. Be with me. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've hurt. I want your heart. And I think in the upcoming months that we are going to have to lean into that more than we have ever leaned into it. It is all we'll have. As the idols of America come crashing down, we will have each other and we will have our faith. So where are you, the question is, where are you in the midst of the passion narrative? Are you, maybe you're part of the crowd. Maybe you're just going along with it. The crowd that rejoices and welcomes him into Jerusalem five days later, turns on him and is shouting, crucify him. Just going along with it. Along with the trends of the world. Or maybe, maybe you're Peter. Maybe you're Peter, maybe, maybe you denied him. Maybe that still weighs heavy on your heart. Maybe you and I sit back and say even this, Peter, how could you deny him? You who lived with him for three years, you walked with him, you saw his miracles, his healings, how could you do it? And yet remember, Peter didn't see the resurrection. 
All he saw was the crucifixion. And also remember that, yes, Peter did deny him, but he went to the courtyard. Being in that courtyard was a death sentence. And he wanted to get close to Jesus. Not Judas. Judas wanted to get as far away as possible. But Peter knew the mercy. But what about you and I? We know he rose from the dead, and yet we still deny him. We deny him in public. We deny him in the workplace. We deny that we know him at school. For fear that we might be branded, that we might be called a Christian or a bigot, because we believe in the law that God established. Or maybe you're one of the Roman soldiers. And I thought about this and prayed about this, it struck me. Because we know that the Roman soldiers, their lust for brutality and violence, along with that, we know that the Romans had rampant sexual promiscuity, orgies, drunkenness, vomitoriums. Their god was pleasure. And we sit back and say how crude and barbaric they were, and yet, look at our culture. We pay to watch people sin. We pay to watch people sin. At least the Romans were pagans. We're Christian. Or maybe, and this is my hope, maybe, maybe you're with Our Lady. Maybe you're close to Christ to the end. With a heart filled with faith, knowing that God's greatest work is taking tragedies and turning them into masterpieces. It's what God does best. He takes dead things and raises them to life. Wherever you are, know that God's mercy is available to you. If you just turn to him. We know this. We know this. Because on the cross there were two thieves. And one simply turned and said, Jesus, remember me. And he did. That is open to every one of you, but you have to ask for it, and you have to make it part of your life. It's almost as if Jesus' final plea on the cross is, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Today we celebrate the power of God's love, which will triumph in every situation. The passion proclaims to every one of us, no matter how dark it is, no matter how tragic it is, no matter how wicked it is, God will have the final word. And so we, true, we either believe that or we don't. Today, as we begin this Holy Week, let us ask that no matter what situation we're in, that we meet Jesus there. Stay with him there. Live with him there. There is one question that remains as I was thinking about this. As the battle of the world rages on, at the end, which side will you and I be on when it's all over? Will we be standing underneath the standard of the devil and the world or the standard of Christ? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all ages, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten and unmade, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Trusting our Father's love for us, we bring him our prayers and our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, the Pope, our Bishop, and all clergy, that their loving care for all in need be a powerful sign of the saving death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for frontline health workers and all essential services personnel. May their dedication inspire us to new levels of generous service and neighborly care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for scientists advising governments and researchers seeking a vaccine. May their expertise encourage us to remain confident and calm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those most vulnerable to the social, economic, and medical effects of COVID-19, the frail, aged, the chronically ill, the poor, the homeless, and all refugees. May they be fully valued throughout the crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all whose mental health is jeopardized by isolation and confinement. May the support of family and friends help them cope with this challenge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those entering into the church today and those being confirmed. May the Holy Spirit strengthen their faith as they journey forward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for one another. May we find new ways to pray, be connected in faith, and celebrate the Paschal Mystery in this Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the recently deceased, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, and for those from our parish, and for today's Mass intention, the people of God. May they be raised to glory in Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those your voices we hold in our hearts. Hear them and grant them if they be in accord with your will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. <clears throat> Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, 
so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right. right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph our spouse, and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty 
from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants, who do sins, hope in your abundant mercies, and graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to visit you into their company, not weighing our merit, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I invite all those who are watching to make the spiritual communion in the following words. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so that by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to you know at home it is is truly painful um, to not have anybody here for Holy Week. I thought I'd been through most of my first, uh, but this is definitely a first to have an empty church uh, during Holy Week. So know that we love you and, and we miss you very dearly, and hopefully this will be over soon. Uh, also, just really encourage you uh, for the donations uh, to the church to help uh, during this time of crisis. We uh, rely completely on that, uh, so to be generous. And then finally, uh, we've been, we put out a video last week, at which I got some pretty funny comments on. And I think we're going to try to do a few more, so tune into those. Just try to do a little catechesis and keep it as lighthearted as we can in, in uh, these troubled times. But know that we're praying for you, and, and please pray for us and, and for the world, and, and just keep going deeper. Keep uniting yourself to Christ, uh, just as he united himself to the Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.